Okay, divers, Halle Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba, Weird Stuff 3. People keep saying, well, how many of these weird stuff episodes are you going to have? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit like uh, Rocky. What do you have, seven? <laughs> anyway, oh, there's lots of weird stuff. 60 years in, in the sport of scuba diving, I have seen some weird stuff. You have no idea. So let me start out with some weird stuff. Where do we go first, Kevin? Well, let's, let's, do, let's do this little compass because it's, it's, it's really neat. This is a Triton compass. This item is actually for sale on my eBay site. I have a lot of my uh, vintage scuba stuff on eBay, my ID is Sea Hunter, if you'd like to go there if you're interested. This is the Triton Compass, quite famous. In the uh, late 60s, early 70s, the Triton underwater compass was quite famous. And uh, that's it. You have to get in close here, Kevin, because I want you to take a look at this. What's the big deal? Underwater compass. Can you see in there? Now, if I turn a little bit, can you see the dial on the bottom moving? No. Yeah, a little bit maybe. All right, this is neat. So there's a the whole compass, and, and as Kevin has shown, straight on, you're looking straight. Oh, north, that's pretty good. Well, mm. the actual compass dial is a round, flat disc setting horizontally. That's the way compasses have to work, horizontally. So when you look in to read the compass, as Kevin's doing right now, you're not looking at the dial. You're looking at a reflection of the dial. That's right. Inside that little dome, there's a mirror. And this mirror is shining down to 45 degrees to the flat compass disc below it. And now as you turn, the compass moves. Neat. And you see how tiny it is. I showed this to Diana, my beautiful wife, just the other day. Oh, that's so neat. Don't sell that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, pretty neat. The Triton Compass. Small piece of weird scuba stuff from years and years ago. What else have I got here? Okay, let's take a look at a couple more things. Here's something you don't see every day. Now, I have a copy of an ad, Kevin, which I think you should put in there as, a, as an added in little photograph, which will really help to explain what this is. This is a tank valve. You've all seen tank valves before. You see, it goes into the tank, knob on up, regularly fits on there. But this tank valve is different. When this tank is mounted, when this valve is mounted in the tank, it sits like this. See the threads that go into the top of the tank and the spigot? So it still has the knob up here, but the valve is bent back. Air hole is on the top. What's with that? Well, as you'll see when Kevin posts this little ad, the regulator's mounted here, a long ways away from your head. You know when you're diving, maybe when you're diving, sometimes you may have put your head back and bumped into your regulator. It's not a big deal, but it happens sometimes. It happens when you're in the pool. Yeah, because you're in the pool, it's shallow, so you're always looking up when you bang your head. When you're scuba diving in the ocean, it doesn't happen so often. But anyway, this particular company called Demone, D-E-M-O-N-E, Demone, Demon with an E on the end. I emphasize that because their symbol, their logo was a little devil, <laughs> a little demon, a little devil, uh, naked, with a tail and a spear. That was their logo. I don't know why they put the E on, and she just called it Demon Diving. But anyway, it's Demone. And they came up with this valve a good many years ago in the, in the early 60s. And, and I'm going to have Kevin put the ad on there. You won't see one of these anywhere else. This is the Demone Slapback Valve, designed to prevent you or stop you from banging your head. Just a neat little item that doesn't even exist anymore. A lot of these items don't exist anymore. Here's another one. Scuba Pro. Famous company. High pressure hose, went to the high pressure port, and this is what was on the end of it. See it there, Kevin? Scuba Pro. That's what it says. I don't say anything else about it. What the heck is this? Well, you need to remember that in the early 60s, we did not have pressure gauges. There were no pressure gauges. Pressure gauges are a fantastic, were just a fantastic development in the world of scuba. Sam LeCoq, a good friend of mine, uh, developed the first pressure gauge here in North America. It's called the Sea View. Sea view gauge. I have a good many of them, and it, it was pretty good. It, it got better. But before that, there were no pressure gauges. She had no idea how much air you had in your tank. Hence, we used to use J-valves. I think you remember that. Everybody had a J-valve, had a reserve on it. So you'd be swimming along, get towards the end of the dive, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm out of air. You would reach back and pull down on the rod, called the J-rod. <laughs> pull the J-rod down, and the valve would spin, the lever would spin, 
and then you get an extra few hundred psi of air, an extra five minutes of air, depending on your depth. But you had a reserve, an air reserve, because you had no idea how much air you had. You ran out. Reserve. Up you go. It wasn't perfect diving, but it worked. That's the way it was. So any devices like the pressure gauge that came out to help the diver know how much air he had were, were really well received. Well, this is a form of pressure gauge made by Skiba Pro. I want you to zoom in here, Kevin. I have to use a pair of pliers because I don't have a tank of air here. But when you put this device onto your tank, high pressure, and turn the air on, the end was pushed out by the high pressure air. Okay? It was pushed out. And if you could see green, you had air. As the dive shortened, as the air slowly went down, it turned to yellow, and finally it turned to red. And you're out of air. <laughs> How about that? A visual pressure gauge. I guess that's what that is, huh? A visual pressure gauge. No idea what the pressure is, but you know, you're out. <laughs> Another thing that doesn't exist, now we just briefly talked about J-valves just there. Again, older divers, when I started diving, we had to have a J-valve. Absolutely. If you didn't have a J-valve, you're almost suicidal because you run out of air and you're <laughs> out of air. So every diver had to have a J-valve. It was just basically a, a rule of thumb, in fact, a rule. It didn't dive without a J-valve. Just as today, you don't dive without a safe second or a BCD or a, uh, a pressure gauge. We had to have a J-valve. Only way we could stay alive. Uh, but you know, when you traveled, uh, down to the resorts. There weren't very many. Well, you went down to Mexico, heaven forbid, or Jamaica, or, or Bahamas, came, whatever it happened to be, in the 60s, 50s, and 60s, and 70s. Uh, those resorts were not very sophisticated. There wasn't a big patty organization to, to give them ideas or anything else. And so they bought the cheapest equipment they could. And then when, when the people arrived at the hotel, which they were affiliated, they would take them on scuba diving. But they had the cheapest equipment they could, meaning cave elves. That's right. Early on, when you went diving and you went to a resort and, and, and you went in to rent a tank for scuba diving, you got a K-valve. Now today, you, that's all you get is K-valves. You don't know that, maybe, but what you are diving with today is a K-valve. It has no reserve. That's what that means. No reserve. But back then, we needed to have a J-valve, but you couldn't get it. You couldn't rent them. The resorts only had K-valves. So if you wanted to, you could go to a company called Sportsways, wonderful company owned by a friend of mine, Sam Lecoq. And you could buy this little device. What the heck is that? Looks a little bit like a regulator. It looks a bit like a valve, too, doesn't it? Well, this is pretty slick. What happens? Too bad I didn't have that tank back here, Kevin. Maybe we should cut and I'll do that. You could put this onto your K valve that you rented, put it on, right? And then you put your regulator over here. Instead of putting your regulator on the valve from the rental tank, you put it on this opening. And this device has a reserve. There's your reserve. So if you had a K valve and you put this onto it, it turns it into a J valve. How about that? This is a pretty funny, I'll tell you a cute story. Just take one minute. Sam Lico, a good friend of mine, was at a scuba uh, a vintage event, a, a sea hunt event actually in Portage Quarry uh, a little while ago, a number of years ago actually. And, uh, and I took this down. I took several items down, old items from Sportsways, and I took this with me. And uh, we were having a quiet moment just watching people and standing there. And I pulled it out of my pocket and said, Sam, you remember this? I handed it to him. And Sam uh, takes it and looks at it. He started to laugh. Big smile. Starts, I don't believe it. He says, I haven't seen one of these in 50 years. I just made this one day. I had nothing to do. I designed this and had it made. I never thought this would ever sell. Well, that's great to see that. He was really, I was, he's 80, 80 years old or more. I was really happy to see him. So pleased to see his K to J valve converter. Weird. Can't get them anymore. Another one. This looks simple. This looks simple. What's this, Ellie? It's a weight belt. whoop de doo Yeah, it's just a weight belt. Nothing special. Weight belt. It's got the old-fashioned type of quick release on it. Wire clip on this end. Wire on there. You go like that. You flip it over. Jams on your body. When you want to open it, you pull like that and it falls apart. So that's all it is. So what's the big deal? What do you mean this is weird? Well, this is weird because this particular belt, unlike what we use today, is entirely made of rubber. <laughs> that's a thick piece of rubber. It's quite thick, quite heavy. Put it around your body, and, uh, and it's rubber, rubber weight belt. That was a great idea. It really was a good idea. Why is it a great idea? Now, <laughs> if you dive in cold water, and you're wearing a wetsuit up in cold water where we are here in Canada, then you probably have already guessed that's a good idea. Why is it a good idea? Well, you know that your wetsuit compresses as you go down. And you also know that as you go down, as your wetsuit compresses, your weight belt gets loose, and it'll fall off. 
with the rubber weight belt, this must be set up for Kevin. If the rubber weight belt like this, you pull it really tightly around your body. Sorry, Kevin. Get you on camera yet, but that'll stop teasing you. You pull it really tightly, rubber weight belt. As you descend and your weight and your wetsuit shrinks, this doesn't fall off. It stays tight on your body. So it's a rubber, heavy, heavy rubber weight belt. Now, interesting enough, this is old, this is vintage, but you can still get them. If you look carefully enough in some of the uh, distribution companies, they still have a rubber weight belt. But I never see them on dive sites anymore. Never see them anymore. Rubber weight belt, another weird thing from the past. Okay, one more, last one, sea voice. How many times have you wanted to talk to your buddy underwater? My wife tells me all the time that she wants to talk to me and she can't get through to me. Sometimes I hear her yelling and screaming in the background. She wants to say something or show me something, but uh, I'm getting old. My hearing's not that good. <laughs> anyway, sometimes it wouldn't be a bad idea to be able to talk to your buddy underwater. So if you are in that position and all you need to go is go to your local dive store and order a sea voice or two. Two is even better. Sea voice. There it is. Sea voice. Underwater communicator. Underwater, what the heck is that? Well, wow, it's very, very simple. You got your sea voice, the buddy's got his sea voice. So, what you do is you take your rag out of your mouth, big breath of air, rag out of your mouth, you put this up to your mouth, like this, and you exhale into it. Hey, buddy, come over here. I've got something to show you. And what happens is your voice goes into this diaphragm, this big balloon in there, and, and when you talk, it makes the balloon vibrate, and your voice travels through the water just like you're on land. Better actually than on land. So that's what you do. Big breath. Hey, buddy, come here. Help me. There's a shark. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to say. And your buddy's over there. How do you... Okay, I do. <laughs> you can talk back and forth. No, it's not perfect. It took a little bit of practice, but it worked. Yep, underwater communicator. Just that simple. There you go, guys. I told you I had weird stuff. There's more coming. Lots of vintage stuff coming. Maybe some more weird stuff too. Hope you enjoyed that. Alec Pierce, Vintage Cuba. Talk to you soon.